Hey, it's Farmer Rishi from Sorgodia Farms, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about gardening tools. There are tons and tons of gardening tools out there, and in reality, you don't need that many. Right in front of me here are the dozen tools that we use the most at our farm, and we get pretty much everything we need to get done with these dozen tools. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about each tool, what we use it for, how we use it, and in some cases I'm gonna to talk to you about an individual brand that I really like. So whatever you're needing to do in your garden, you should be able to get it done with these tools. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. The first set of tools I'm gonna to talk to you about are my digging tools. And these are the three tools that we use for digging. Pretty much don't use anything else. Now, of course, you know your shovel, and then we have your little shovel, which is also called your trowel. And then the one you probably don't know about, that's the digging fork. This is actually one of my favorite, favorite tools. So let's show you how to use all three of these. So your trowel or your very tiny shovel is basically used to plant. This is what we're gonna use to plant our little plants like this. Very easy, you know, just to get in there and make a tiny little hole not to do anything more than that. You're not trying to plant a tree with this trowel. Just make a little hole, get your plant in there, and cover it back up. If you need to make a bigger hole for, let's say, planting a tree, then this combo is an unbeatable combo. The long handle shovel and the digging fork. I'm gonna tell you about this specific digging fork more in a second because this is my favorite brand of this tool uh, but what the digging fork is going to help you do is loosen up the soil before you actually start digging it out with a shovel so a lot of us when we're first starting out in our gardens the soil is super compacted and it's hard for the shovel to break through that compaction and the digging fork solves that problem you can break up the compaction first and then dig it out with the shovel so just to give you an example this area that we're in right here, this soil has never really been amended. So it's gonna be hard for me to get in there with my shovel. Okay, it's very, very compact. Okay, and the shovel is doing a decent job there of breaking it up, but watch what happens when I use my digging fork. I can really get in there. See how I got like almost 10 inches deep just with that stroke? And I can get in there a little further again and just lift this all up and break this up. And that gets rid of all the clods. It breaks through the compaction. And then I can use my shovel to really get in there and dig my hole for my tree. So even on our farm here where we have really silty soil, if it's an area that's been unamended, we start off with the digging fork just to loosen things up get in there with a shovel. If you need to go deeper, digging fork, shovel, clear it out, back to the digging fork, clear it out, back to the digging fork. And that's how you can get, I've dug six feet deep with these two tools. And it's way easier than using a pitchfork, much more easy on your back, all of that. The digging fork is also the best tool for removing invasive grasses like this Bermuda grass below me. You know, this Bermuda grass has these roots that really spread out and they keep digging themselves in. And if you don't pull those roots out completely when you're trying to take this plant out, it's gonna just pop right back up. And so people tell me all the time, oh, it's impossible to remove Bermuda grass. It's not impossible. If you have a small patch like this, then the digging fork is gonna do it for you in just one shot. If you have a bigger amount, you know, covering a large area like a, like a lawn or something. Uh, there's a technique I'm gonna show you in another video called lasagna mulching. But for this, the digging fork is gonna do just fine. So again, just gonna get right under it, try to loosen up those roots from the soil. So as I'm doing this, I'm just trying to feel that the grass is no longer catching on the soil that I've lifted it all up. And now I can get down and pull it out completely. Pretty easy now. It's all loose. 
I'm kind of get my hand under there and just try to follow the uh, roots as far as I can. Make sure I'm pulling it all up. Look at that. These are those runners that it's sending out to spread. And with this tool, I've loosened them completely from the soil and I can just pull them right out. You can see I'm getting like nice big pieces. If you try to do this with some other tool, like a shovel, you're gonna cut through those invasive roots and leave pieces behind. But if you just get, get it all out in one big piece like this, you can be more assured that it is actually gone. When it comes to these tools, your round pointed shovel, you just want to look for one that's got a solid shaft. You know, the tool and the shaft are one piece. It's securely riveted to the handle. And then I like the fiberglass handles. That's going to make for a lighter and stronger tool. Less likely you're going to break the handle. And it's going to last much longer. In terms of the digging fork, I highly, highly recommend this specific brand. This is the Radius Tools Pro Garden Fork. They also have a Pro Light. You want to get the Pro much, much stronger tines. Uh, you know, what makes this such a great tool is this is forged steel. This is all one single piece. And these tines are super, super strong. They're nice and pointed at the end. And I love the, the O-shaped handle on the end because I can get both my hands in. I can really just dig in there with this. So this is my favorite version. And I've been using this for, I think I found this company a dozen years ago. Uh, and we have these available here in store and we can ship them to you at home too. Our watering tools, I'm gonna to show you just two tools today. The first one, this is the Dram One Touch Fan Nozzle. And I really like this one for out in the garden, in the vegetable garden or in the orchard or your flower beds. It's got a really nice, even fan-shaped spray. And I can kind of use that to adjust to the size of any garden bed. It's also really durable. A lot of these eight-in-one nozzles, they just break really easily or they get clogged. Something about them stops working. I've had these eight in this dram fan nozzle out in our vegetable gardens for years now. Same nozzle. I really like the easy on-off here. Um, just perfect for out in the garden. This is the Wonder Waterer, and this is my favorite watering wand for our nursery. And the reason is all because of that soft, gentle spray. So you can see, even when I'm on high pressure, it's putting out this really, really gentle spray pattern, which is never gonna blow my seedlings out. It's not gonna break the necks of my young plants. It's really just like, a, kind of like a heavy drizzle, I would say. And this is so perfect for seedlings and young plants. So we've got these everywhere, all of our nursery for our baby plants. The Wonder Water is a little difficult to find, but you can find it at our farm store and we ship these online as well. With me here, I have my mulching tools. And mulching is something that we do quite often, almost constantly here on our farm. Of course, you might, probably won't be able to do that at your own home, but getting a pile of mulch maybe once a year will be really important for uh, your soil's health. And especially if you're growing trees, keeping the soil around them, mulch with wood chips can be really, really beneficial. So the four mulching tools I have are my five tine pitchfork. One, two, three, four, five. That's actually really important my rake, and I like these heavy rakes, and then the uh, flathead shovel. And this will be used kind of at the end of the mulching process. And then of course the other thing you need is a wheelbarrow to move all that material around. So for loading up the wheelbarrow, I'm gonna show you why this five tine pitchfork works so well. Let's show you how these other two perform first. So my standard shovel, it's got a little bit of trouble like getting into the pile and then I can only pick up, you know, really quite little. So this is gonna take ages if I'm using my standard pointed shovel. If I go with the flathead shovel, I really can't get into the pile at all because it's hitting and it just 
Again, not very much material with each scoop. But with the five kind pitchfork, I can really get in there and pick up quite a lot at once. And that's why this is so fantastic for mulching. And not only for mulching, if you get a load of bulk compost from a compost supplier, you'll be surprised that even though that compost is much finer than this wood chips, the pitchfork still works better. It's just easier to get in, and the material is kind of binding itself together as we pick it up, so you can pick up quite a lot at once. Now one reason I love this all stainless steel wheelbarrow is because I've had it for a dozen years now and there's really nothing on this thing that can break. I'm not sure the brand anymore. There was a label somewhere down here that got uh, corroded off by now. But if you can find one of these, this brand specifically is really great. Super solid construction and it's going to last you a lifetime. Uh, there are other all-steel wheelbarrows, but I really uh, suggest that you get something solid that's going to last you for a while because the ones with the wood handles, they tend to break and over time, you know, the cheaper buckets will rust out. This is really, really solid and I think it's going to last another 10 years at least. So once I've dumped my mulch out, then I'm going to grab my heavy rake and just rake this out. Now this, you know, the rake, uh, I think almost any rake is fine. There's not a specific brand that I recommend, uh, but just like the other tools I showed you, this has got the fiberglass handle. So it's a little lighter weight. It's gonna last quite a long time. Uh, and it's just easier on me. You wanna have a nice long handle so you can kind of reach pretty far and spread this out. The flat-headed shovel is useful for mulching, though, primarily for cleaning your mulch up. So once you spread your mulch out uh, or, you know, you dump your pile and kind of it's spread onto some concrete or asphalt area, the flathead shovel is useful just for cleaning up the mulch off of that kind of hardscape. So believe it or not, there's actually an uh, asphalt driveway right under me here. It's been covered over with mulch after many, many, many deliveries, um, and I can use this to scoop that mulch up off the ground and clean off my hardscape. So that's the most useful way to use this flathead shovel. For pruning, you're primarily gonna need three tools. And these three tools basically correspond to cutting smaller things to cutting larger things. And the three tools that we have, and in order of smaller things to larger things, is your hand pruner. And this is what I use probably the most in my life as a farmer. Then and that cuts uh, smaller, small branches. Going up from that is the lopper. That cuts kind of medium-sized branches. And then finally we have the pruning saw, and that is for cutting larger branches. So I'm gonna show you how to use each of these tools. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about these brands that I'm using here because uh, these are the ones that, you know, I use pruning tools a lot. Uh, we do a lot of pruning here since we have hundreds of trees to take care of. Um, so I've kind of used many, many brands and settled on these as my favorite. So I'll talk about why I like these ones so much. So my hand pruner, like I mentioned, is my most used tool on the farm. And that's because I just carry it with me at all times with my sheath here. And I'm just cutting things as I go. Once your garden is really more established, pruning and cutting things back actually becomes a tremendous part of the work that you're doing. So I just walked by here and noticed that on this citrus tree, I have root stock coming up. That's the, uh, you know, my, my orange tree here is grafted. So the above part here that produces the fruit is the orange and below this point on the trunk is the rootstock and that is the trifoliate orange and this this part of the tree will not produce fruit uh, it's got these three leaves here and these these long spines so if you ever see this on your citrus tree you want to cut these off 
And so I'm just going to use my pruner to cut off this trifoliate orange rootstock. My pruner is also one of my primary weeding tools. And so what I do th with this is I don't like to rip my weeds out by the root. One, because for weeds that have been es established longer and have a deeper root system, that can actually strain over and over again. Uh, and two, because if I pull the plant out, then I'm not leaving that, you know, I'm, I'm taking all the nutrients that the plant has developed in the soil. And by that, I mean its root system is already in the soil. And that's already creating a for water and nutrients to get down into the soil. Uh, so if I pull it out, I'm losing that. And so instead what I do is I will just brush back the soil from the surface here, expose the root, and then I'm gonna cut through this root and just remove the plant that way. Now, that plant is not gonna go back because I've removed any of its growing tips. Uh, and this root is gonna decompose in the soil. And as it decomposes, it's gonna enrich the soil. It's also gonna leave a pathway for water and air to get into the soil too. So let me just show you that again. Let's try it with this. This is a uh, lamb's quarter, actually an edible plant, but something I don't want spreading too, too much. So I'm gonna just scooch that soil back a little bit and then cut through here. And to finish this off, I'm now gonna take my pruner and just chop this plant up into some mulch. So I don't need to throw this plant away. You know, it, it's not set seeds yet, so I'm not worried about those seeds spreading. I can just chop this up and turn that into mulch. So your hand pruner can comfortably cut up to about half an inch. You can maybe stretch it to three quarter inch if you have a really strong hand, uh, but try not to strain yourself and just limit yourself to half an inch with this guy. So if you're doing anything bigger than that, you wanna go with the lopper and the lopper can go all the way up to about two inches depending on the kind that you have. Um, so using the lopper is pretty simple. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be pruning kind of the, uh, the lower part of this uh, elderberry tree here and I just wanna just chop through all of this stuff and you can see how easily, you know, if I try to do this with the hand pruner, um, I'm really gonna have to struggle, but with the lopper, I can just get right through this. And if I'm doing a kind of a cleanup pruning like I am doing right now, I'll even just start at the bottom of the branch and just chop my way up so that I'm kind of making my mulch just right here with the lopper. So you can see how quick of work that made of just cleaning all of this up, uh, easily get able to get through these like two inch thick branches. Now this is elderberry, so it is a kind of a lightweight wood and it was real easy for me to just slide right through all that stuff. It'll be a little difficult, more difficult on some harder woods. Now I still have a lot of cleanup to do here and I need to cut the much thicker branch back here, which is about three, four inches thick. And so for that, I'm gonna use my pruning saw. Using a pruning saw is pretty simple. It's just like any other saw, uh, but you can't use any other saw to cut through wood. A pruning saw is meant to cut through green growing wood. A saw that you have you know, in your garage for cutting lumber, that's meant for cutting through dried out wood. This is meant for cutting green growing wood. It's got completely different teeth uh, and it's super sharp. I'm gonna go kind of close to the uh, base of the branch and just get right through it. Took a little bit of effort, about a 45 seconds of sawing and I got right through that. Again, this is a pretty light wood elderberry, uh, but having a really good pruning saw will make quick work of even thicker, bran thicker branches 
like this. I'll also use my pruning saw to go back and kind of clean up some of the cuts that I made with the lopper. So if I couldn't get close enough to the trunk with the lopper, then I'll come back with the pruning saw and just get a little bit of a closer cut so I'm not leaving a huge branch at the exposed here. To wrap up our cutting tool overview, I want to talk to you about the specific brands of tools that I've shown you here in this video and that we carry in our store, both here on the farm and online. So for the hand pruner, uh, we offer this, which is the Niwaki hand forged Japanese steel pruner. This is made in Japan and this is actually made by hand. So it's Japanese steel is hand folded over and over and over again. This is two pieces of steel uh, that have been bolted together here with the spring. Um, and this is basically the hardest, longest lasting blade that you're gonna find on a pruner. And, you know, like I said, the pruner is the tool that I use the most in the farm and in the garden. And so if you're using a cheap pruner like a Fiskars or a Corona and you're cutting over and over again, you're gonna put a lot of wear on your hand, on your fingers, on your wrist, on your elbow, your forearm. Um, so having a really high quality pruner, you know, if I was gonna invest in one tool, it would be this one. Um, so again, the Niwaki, this is hand forged, um, super sharp, super hard steel that is gonna stay sharp for a really long time. Eventually you do have to sharpen this and the only way to sharpen it is by hand sharpening it. So that's the Nawaki. The other one that we offer here is the ARS VS, and this comes in three different sizes. So you can find the one that fits your hand perfectly. Uh, this is still a Japanese steel, Japanese manufactured tool. The reason we carry only Japanese tools is because you know, they are known for their cutting blades and they make the absolute best pruners in the world. Um, so the difference with this one is it, it is an industrially manufactured tool. So it's not handmade. Uh, it's made out of stamped steel, so it's not folded over and over again. It's cut out of a piece of steel. It's still extremely sharp, um, but it's not going to be as long lasting of a sharpness as the Niwaki. However, with this one, the blade is actually replaceable. So if you don't want to hand sharpen, that seems something that's kind of beyond your skill level, then get the ARS. You can replace the blade. It also in terms of usability, it's got this really convenient uh, uh, opening latch. So to open this up, all you gotta do is squeeze and it opens right up. And then to lock it, you just push this little lever up with your thumb while you're squeezing and it's locked closed. The Niwaki has a, a bottom catch here. So you just hit that with your pinky and then to close it, I'll just hit it against myself. Um, and that is how you do the Nawaki. So these are the two pruners again that we offer. Uh, both really, really high quality. One is not necessarily better than the other. It just kind of depends what you prefer uh, and what will fit for you better. For your lopper, I'm going to recommend the ARS brand. It is extremely lightweight, which can be really, really helpful for your for you know doing a lot of lopping. And you know the way that I showed you with the elderberry, just like chopping things up. The lighter weight this is, the less strain it's going to put on your shoulders and on your chest and on your back muscles as you're doing this. Uh, this again is all of the tools that I'm going to show you are Japanese made out of Japanese steel, which is again the best quality steel uh, and the sharpest. So this is again that same Japanese steel from ARS. It's extremely sharp. Uh, it's got a long lasting edge and it's got these nice you know, bumpers right here so that when you're squeezing you're not not straining you too much. Long reach handle so you can reach you know pretty far with this guy either way up high or down low. Uh, super super high quality and again this one also has a replaceable blade. Finally for your pruning saw I recommend this one also the one that we carry the ARS GR17. I love this because first of all it folds so I can easily fit it like right into my pocket and carry it around. It's really lightweight and of course, you saw me using it. It's extremely, extremely sharp. Um, so this is, for me, this has been the best one to use. It's got this nice kind of rounded shape. So when you're pulling, uh, it's kind of, 
cutting through the wood on its own and your pinky catches on this little lip right down here. So you can get all that force as you're getting through. So that's it for the pruning tools. Again, we have all of these available at our store on our farm here, or you can get, ship, get them shipped to you. Uh, these are like the highest quality tools I've found and the ones that we ourselves use here on our farm. So just highly recommend these. Okay, thank you for joining me for this lesson of the never ending gardening course. I hope this gave you a really good understanding of what tools you're going to need for most of the work that's happening in your garden and some specific recommendations for you as well. Like I mentioned, a lot of the tools we have available here at our farm or in our online store. So you can come by and get them from us. Uh, other than that, I'll see you at the next lesson. And remember, no garden too small, no soil too poor.